Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Harminder Singh. And I'm Edna Zeh. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Finance chief doesn't want TPP deal to become a trade barrier against Hong Kong. Health secretary says efforts to fight dengue fever will not halt even with falling temperatures. And Hong Kong's first major cycling event wraps up in Chim Sa Choi. Finance Chief Zhang Zheng has admitted he sometimes feels like a human recorder by repeating official lines about property policies so he doesn't disrupt the market. He also says he doesn't want to see Washington's controversial Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement turning into a trade barrier. Vicky Wan reports. Financial Secretary Zhang Zheng may be halfway around the world in Peru as part of an overseas trip, but that didn't stop him from updating his blog today. In it, he said he will ask U.S. Federal Reserve Chairwoman Janet Yellen about possible interest rate increases. Speculation about the Fed raising rates again has been affecting markets in Hong Kong and elsewhere, and it was thought Yellen would announce an increase soon, but it is believed poor U.S. job data has put off any decisions for the near future. Zhen said he believes he won't get a straightforward answer from Yellen, likening the situation to reporters only getting model answers from him when he tries to avoid turbulence in local property markets when responding to questions about his cooling measures. I can only be a human recorder repeating the same answers, even if I might disappoint the reporters, Zhang said. On another topic, the controversial Trans-Pacific Partnership, he said he's noticed concern that the trade deal will have a negative effect on Hong Kong. Critics fear the landmark agreement between 12 Pacific Rim nations is another attempt by Washington to contain China, which hasn't signed up for it. But Zeng said the agreement would go against its original principles to stimulate free trade if it bars specific countries or regions. He added that he doesn't want to see the agreement turning into another form of trading barrier. Zeng also insisted that Hong Kong still has its advantages as a global free trade market, and the government will work with the finance industry to raise the city's competitiveness. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Temperatures have plunged across the territory, with the mercury dipping to 18.5 degrees, the lowest so far this autumn. Despite cooler temperatures, the health chief says authorities will not relax anti-dengue fever measures. Temperatures fell to as low as 18.5 degrees, the lowest so far this autumn, according to the observatory. The weather will remain cool under the influence of a northeast monsoon affecting South China coastal areas, but will become fine midweek. Although the weather has become cooler, Health Chief Koeingman said measures against dengue fever will continue. Uh, winter is now approaching and um, there are uh, many factors affecting the activity of the uh, mosquito uh, causing dengue fever. Um, of course, the lower uh, temperature would uh, cause uh, the uh, lowering of the activity of the mosquito. But on the other hand, uh, increase and persistent rainfall would also um, uh, favor the, uh, uh, the uh, activity of mosquito and therefore uh, the government has basically decided uh, to continue our effort in um, um, mos mosquito control throughout the winter. Meanwhile, there have been reports that the clinical services section of the hospital to be built at Kaitak Development Area will be smaller than originally planned. Ko said planning is still in its initial stage and he will try to lobby for more space for clinical use. Doctors are voicing their concerns about the feasibility of an opt-out organ donation system, which would make all residents potential donors. Instead, they say educating the public more about the current system could boost the number of donors. Karen Young reports. Following the death of 19-year-old Jamila Lowe while she was waiting for a double lung transplant, Health Secretary Ko Wing Man said the government was considering changing organ donation laws. Yesterday, he suggested making Hong Kongers potential donors by introducing a system where they would need to opt out if they didn't want their organs used to save the lives of other people. 
But some doctors say the idea won't work in Hong Kong. Speaking at RTHK City Forum, Hong Kong Society of Transplantation Chairman Chak Wai Lang said it would change the meaning of organ donation from a selfless move to a social responsibility. Others voice their concerns about the complicated procedures involved in changing the law. But the thing is, to, to opt out, um, you have to convince the general public on these changes in, in policies. And um, now, out from the current political uh, 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 environment, it might be a major task for the governments to, to achieve it. Chen added that Chinese University's medical school receives more donated bodies for education use these days over 80 a year compared with four or five in the past. He insists encouraging more people to join the current opt-in system would be an effective way of boosting the organ donation rate. Chen also suggests the government announce the number of patients waiting for transplants regularly to increase the public's awareness about the need for organ donations. Currently, about 2,000 people are waiting for organ transplant surgeries. Karen Yang, ATV News. Tin Shou Wai residents slammed the link today for deciding to close a local market without consulting them first. They're complaining that they will be inconvenienced and have to pay more for food at a newly renovated market. Karen Yong has more. More than 30 Tin Shou Wai residents marched to the link's office at Tin Yu Estate. They criticized the management company for closing Tin Yu market without telling the public. We hope the link will at least communicate with the residents first, even if they are not going to keep the market, said Ng Kwan Lim, convener of Tin Yu Market Concern Group. The protesters were going to hand in a petition, but instead they tore it up because they were annoyed that the link representative wasn't a high-ranking staff member. They want a further action if the company's management doesn't meet them within seven days. Once the market closes early next year, Residents will instead have to shop at Tinsheng Market, which is currently undergoing multi-million dollar renovations. Some Tinshi estate residents complain that not only will it be inconvenient, but food prices will probably be higher. This woman, who is in her 80s, said she will have to get the bus because it takes more than an hour for her to walk to the market. Food in the new market will definitely be more expensive due to the lack of competition and high rent, said this woman. Tinsheng Market is expected to reopen in two phases, the first around Christmas and then Lunar New Year next year. Earlier, the link said it planned to introduce luxury foods to the market and that an increase in rent was inevitable due to the cost of the renovations. It's unclear how big the demand for luxury foods will be in the area, which is notorious for its high unemployment. The company insists the plant won't necessarily mean local food prices will go up. Karen Yang, ATV News. Student groups say they are planning referendums to change university laws. They want to scrap the rule that automatically makes the chief executive chancellor following recent appointment rows at some universities. Vicky Wan reports. The Hong Kong Federation of Students and the student unions at eight universities say they will organize referendums from next month until February next year. They want students to decide whether they want to amend their university's ordinance. The move came after the Provost Chancellor Saga at the Hong Kong University and appointments of figures considered pro Beijing at Ningnan University Council. Alan Wong, Deputy General Secretary of the Federation, accused the chief executive of abusing his power as a chancellor and meddling in the university's administration. He said they can't tolerate the university councils and boards becoming the backyard of the government and insisted they are standing up for the autonomy and academic freedom of the universities. The students want the law changed so the chief executive isn't automatically appointed as their chancellor. They also want students and teachers to have a bigger say in university boards and councils. If the majority agrees to changing the ordinance, the Federation will ask the universities to set up their own review committees. However, Wong admitted their plan will almost certainly have no effect on the system, so they may have to resort to protests and strikes. Vicky Wen, ATV News. 
There has been rioting on the Thai resort island of Phuket after two men on a motorbike were killed after crashing into a police car. But first in our roundup of international news, protesters clashed with police in Turkey following yesterday's bomb attacks which killed at least 96 people. Ben O'Rourke reports. Turkey has begun three days of mourning for the dozens of people killed by two bombs near a railway station in Ankara yesterday. But some Turkish are more upset than others and took to the streets to denounce the government, which it blames for the violence. The protesters shouted slogans demanding President Tayyip Erdogan resign and threw stones at police who responded with tear gas. Yesterday's attack targeted protesters complaining about the long-running conflict with Kurdish separatists. Erdogan abandoned peace talks with the Kurdish in favor of a crackdown on militants as part of a security policy sparked by the rise of Islamic State. An Israeli airstrike on the Gaza Strip this morning killed a Palestinian woman and her daughter, the latest in a series of violent incidents in the region. The Israeli military said its air force had targeted two weapons sites belonging to Hamas militants in response to rocket attacks on Israel. Gaza health officials said the woman killed was 30 and pregnant, and her daughter was three. Earlier, Israeli soldiers shot dead two Palestinians aged 12 and 15 along the Gaza border. Officials said the boys were taking part in a protest near the security fence. An angry mob firebombed and stoned a police station and torched vehicles on the Thai island of Phuket overnight, following the deaths of two men whose motorbike collided with a police car. More than 100 rioters blocked roads and refused to let fire engines through, according to Thai media. The crowd finally dispersed after police agreed to meet relatives of the dead men. Media reports say the men sped through a checkpoint in what police described as a suspicious manner, prompting them to give chase. Four policemen involved in the pursuit have been transferred to a station in another province. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News. Turning to sports, Hong Kong's first ever cyclothon took place yesterday and today with races in Chim Sa Choi and other parts of West Kowloon. Oh, yeah, yeah. The 35-kilometer challenge ride began at Chim Sa Choi this morning and took cyclists through West Kowloon. The gloomy weather didn't dampen the spirits of the professional and experienced amateur cyclists. Postcard-worthy moments were plenty as they crossed Stonecutters Bridge and Nam Wan Tunnel. On the return leg, riders crossed the Ching Ma Bridge on their way to Chim Sa Choi. Last night, four races held around Chim Sa Choi took cyclists from Modi Road to Salisbury Road and back. Really technical through here for about 500 meters, but the, the rest of the course is very nice, very open. A dip through the tunnel, another hairpin. Yeah, it's, there's not long straights which will make it easy to chase, so it's perfect for a breakaway. That's the one thing you look at other big races and they have amazing scenery and this actually brings a, a very different uh, perspective, I think. I mean, you see the Tour de France racing through country fields, but racing in front of this skyline, I mean, you wouldn't say that anywhere else in the world, I don't think, so yeah, I think it's a good thing. However, the event was not without incident, as some routes were jammed when participants bumped into each other and at least five people were injured. The event concluded with rides for future cycling stars.